Welcome to Go Get It. Today we are going to start a new video series which is based on the subject computer architecture. And in this subject there are a lot of topics to be discussed like number system, memory organization, IO organization, then micro uh, controllers and etc. So today we are going to start with the memory organization. Before we start uh, I am assuming that you are well aware of certain basic definitions of the memory uh, such as cache memory, main memory or auxiliary memory. We will start with the memory interfacing. I will show you uh, the basic uh, diagram of uh, any uh, memory basically. Uh, what it involves is like uh, if you see in a, uh, in a computer we have uh, CPU or the processor. Then we have here cache memory. and we have pardon my writing main memory we have and we have auxiliary memories so uh, in layman language you must be aware of this auxiliary language uh, auxiliary memory are no, nothing but the hard disk drives what we have in uh, uh, in our uh, computers basically nowadays you will find 1 TB of uh, auxiliary memories main memory is nothing but your RAM random access memory 8 GB or less or more it can be based on the personal use computer or official computer it varies and cache memory maximum you will find like 2 MB or 4 MB memories in cache memories so uh, how the data flows between processor and uh, memories so basically CPU interacts with cache memory based on the cache mapping techniques so as you must be preparing for the exam so you would have heard about the terminologies cache mapping techniques uh, for example we have direct mapping technique then associative mapping technique and then we have set associative mapping these are the three different kinds of mapping techniques associated with cache memory we'll discuss it in, in our later session then we have main memory basically um, if uh, in cache memory we uh, what uh, generally uh, cache memory is helpful for it stores the uh, uh, we have one more uh, terminology associated here is uh, LOR locality of reference so basically uh, when you execute some program and uh, the data which is required uh, at a regular basis or uh, it is required um, say for example in a for loop you need uh, your data uh, in a regular basis then such uh, things are stored in a cache memory because it will uh, it will reduce the just a second uh, it will reduce the time consumption between the data transfer between CPU and cache memory so cache memory is the uh, low, lower size memory uh, it uh, its size varies from 2 MB to 4 MB max and um, then uh, we have uh, higher access uh, i mean lesser access uh, time here so that higher uh, will be the utilization main memory is again another level of memory this is say for example this is l1 this is l2 and this is l3 so these are the different levels of memory we will be uh, looking into these levels of memory basically in this video session we are going to discuss about two level memory uh, two level memories so we'll solve two three problems on based on that which will be very much helpful to understand the concept and uh, from exam point of view also in main memory we will store the data basically so uh, if at all cache memory uh, the, the data is not present in cache memory it will look for processor look for in main memory and based on the uh, levels of memory and the approaches followed it will transfer the data between cache memory and uh, sometimes it happens that CPU directly transfer data from main memory and uh, this is the interaction between main memory and uh, auxiliary memory or the hard disk drive so that's how uh, memory interfacing happens in a uh, computer this is the basic uh, structure now uh, directly jumping into the levels of memory uh, so as i shown here that we have a level 1 cache memory for example and then level 2 so in, in a generalized manner if we consider here so uh, uh, in, a, in any memory organization we have two terminologies associated which are very much important which first is hit ratio and second is uh, fault 
so hit ratio is nothing but like when a processor refers to the uh, ith level of memory say for example we have a memory level uh, memory, memory hierarchy here so this is i this is i plus 1 this is i plus 2 so these are the levels of memory so here you can say that cache memory is there here at this level we have main memory then we have uh, basically at the top we will find registers and then main memory and then auxiliary memory etc so these are the different levels of memory so uh, when processor refers to ith level of memory if it is found uh, whenever a processor say for example we have cache memory here and processor is referring for any data in the cache memory if at all the data is found in cache memory then it is hit and if at all it is not found and it has to refer to main memory then it is fault so that's how hit and fault are uh, defined so these play these hit ratio and fault ratio uh, plays very important role from problem perspective from the utilization of this processor etc so uh, we have uh, without wasting much time i'm going to look into the two level memory uh, system for a two level memory system we have first of all default approach so mind well that uh, these approaches are uh, very much important for problem solving so let's say for the example we will have a processor then we have l1 l1 is nothing but the level 1 memory and then we have l2 so what happens in uh, default uh, approach processor communicates directly with l2 so uh, with l2 if and now if at all any miss or fault occurs so this fault is also called as miss so uh, what does it mean say for example when any program is executing so processor will first of all refer to level 1 memory if at all the data is found it's good it's hit if at all data is not found in l1 then processor would directly jump to l2 and it will try to find the data in l2 so it is assumed that the data if it is not present in l1 it is it will be present in l2 so uh, this uh, hit this is called as hit at the level 1 and accessing from the l2 is called as miss but this um, uh, miss or fault it is called as so uh, in this case we need to find the average t average the average access time of the complete system we can find out say for example when uh, l1 is uh, accessed we have a hit ratio of h and time taken to access l1 is t1 and time taken to access l2 is t2 so uh, the problem the equation comes out to be when processor finds the data so it is a hit and the time taken to access main memory is t1 plus when l1 is not found the data is not found in l1 then it will directly look for l2 so in that case what happens is it is a miss and the direct access time of l2 so this is the equation which comes for default approach i hope you understood this equation how it derives h is nothing but the hit ratio and 1 minus h2 is nothing but the fault because uh, it it is not found in the l1 so that's why it is directly accessing from l2 and whose access time is t2 so that's how um, case 1 and the default approach is this then uh, let me add one more page here so moving on to the second approach we have strict hierarchy or strict approach so what does this strict approach say is that again we'll have the same kind of diagram processor l1 and l2 so again processor it's a hit if at all in strict memory hierarchy processor fetches data from l1 if it is found then it is a hit as i said earlier so it is h1 say for example data is if it is not found in here data is read from l2 so data is read from l2 and shifted to l1 so what happens in strict is processor never directly communicates with l2 level 
processor only communicates with l1 and if at all it is a miss that means data is not found in l1 then it will communicate it will pass on the data from l1 sorry l2 to l1 and reads from l1 so and this comes under fault so this process this time uh, i mean whatever process uh, data transfer happens this comes under fault so here the t average comes around h1 t1 same as before and then we have 1 minus h1 that is that is nothing but your uh, fault and we have multiplied by t1 plus t2 so this is how the average access time comes in this case so these are the two different default appro uh, default approach and strict memory memory hierarchy we have discussed here and this is how t average memory or the average access time is calculated for such memory systems in our next video session we will be discussing about uh, three or four problems based on these problems keep watching and uh, thanks for listening so you can mail your demands at demand at gogetiit.com have a great day